How difficult politically has this been between making sure the United States is supporting their ally Israel, but also making sure that, as you heard from the secretary, minimizing civilian casualties, which at this point is north of 15,000 Palestinians? Well, I certainly think that President Biden has been doing an amazing job. He's shown his dedication to the state of Israel. He's traveled there personally. He has said and done the right things. And while I'm not on that trip with our Secretary of State right now, I will say that we are feeling very optimistic seeing hostages return, hostages come home, and then hearing their harrowing stories. And we still have over 100 hostages in those tunnels in Gaza, being held by terrorists, being starved, not getting beds. And that's the push right now. And yes, we do want to continue to minimize innocent civilian life. That is the cost of Hamas. That is what eradicating Hamas will do for the people of Gaza. It will no longer put innocents in harm's way. Congresswoman, our viewers uh, should know that you're a co-chair of the Congressional Hostage Task Force, uh, which is not exactly a household name, but it's important today. You've got a resolution condemning Hamas passed with, I believe, uh, unanimous approval in the House. The hard part beyond that, though, because I can't imagine any of your colleagues voting against that, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, the hard part now is going to be finding funding for Israel. And we've talked about it before. It would likely be, at least through the eyes of the White House, coupled with funding for Ukraine. And we keep hearing it's all hinging on a deal over border security. Are you prepared to open your mind to things like asylum law changes, parole system changes that would bring Republicans to the table on this? You know what? These are the things that really frustrate the American people. Why do we have to legislate all things at once? And yet here we are. This is how this deal looks like it co is coming down. Tomorrow is December 1st. We don't have an end of the year budget showdown for the first time in a decade. What a relief. But we do have to do something about funding Ukraine, funding Israel, and now it looks like also fixing the border all in one fell swoop mm -hmm. before the, the holiday season really kicks into full gear and members have to go home to be with their family. Although we know our service members aren't at home and that there are people around the world waiting for U.S. leadership. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to listen. I've been following very closely the uh, words and direction of Senator Schumer, who's leading the Senate. We think the Senate is going to go first. Mm. Uh, that will certainly be very important for us. And I also want to be very clear that, yes, we need to fund Israel, and we also need to fund Ukraine. We cannot let Putin get away with his lawlessness. And so those, those are the things that are on the table. Certainly, we know the southern border has been plagued with many challenges over a uh, a multitude of years preceding President Biden's ar arrival into the White House. I want to make sure the right funding is there, the right technology and support for the personnel that keep this country safe. When it comes to Israel, though, there's a debate within Congress if there should be strings or conditions attached to this aid. Do you think there should be conditions on the aid the United States sends to Jerusalem and Tel Aviv? Absolutely not. I'm not for conditions, particularly in this circumstance. That's what detractors of Israel are pushing for. And we have a country, a very close ally of the United States, uh, the only democracy in the Middle East that has been attacked, that's in the middle of a war, that is reckoning with their own civilians being uh, taken hostage and put into terrible terrible situations. We have Iran uh, knocking on the door, uh, chomping at the bits here to see this destruction of Israel. We need to put our money where our mouth is. We need to support our ally. We should have done this yesterday. I'm pushing to uh, provide the aid to Israel, uh, continue to support the funding for the Iron Dome, which is technology that prevents those missiles that are being fired at Israel every single day from harming more civilians. Congresswoman, I want to ask you about an important voter block in states like your own in Michigan. As we learned that the Arab uh, American Institute has polling showing that Joe Biden has a problem with Arab American voters and Muslim American voters who are very critical about the way this war has been raged, has been waged, I should say. The American uh, Arab American Institute, sorry, estimating from its own polling about 59 percent 
of Arab American voters supported Joe Biden in 2020, and they say their polling indicates a dramatic decline in recent weeks. What should they know about Joe Biden's posture on this war? Well, I want Joe Biden to win re-election. And I want Joe Biden to win re-election because of the things he has done and the convictions and the policies that he has stood for. And that is what he is showing the world with his Middle East strategy right now. Understandably, war is horrific. There has been uh, a lot of collateral in the Middle East. We all remember the, the start of the civil, uh, Syrian civil war, 200,000 uh, lives lost in that what's continuing to take place in, in Yemen. But what we need is clarity and consistency of leadership at the world stage. That is mission critical. And as long as the president is staying true to his word, his values, his commitment to democracy and free society, I believe that will continue to win the day. And certainly, we know in Michigan, our richness of diversity, our Christian Iraqi community, our Chaldean community that has such a vibrant presence in Michigan is going to play a huge role in this election, as well as our Jewish voters and young people. We need to be listening, but we also need to be leading right now. And that is exactly what this president is doing, unlike the former tweeter in chief, who's certainly driving a lot of people crazy with his antics. Well, the former president, uh, you know, think what you may about him. In Michigan, he seems pretty dead even right now, according to our polling, and we're polling swing states, and then he's leading all of the other swing states. So these are critical states where President Biden, if he wants to remain in that office, needs to win or make an impact in. Why is the message, do you think, not getting across in Michigan, where our polling shows that Really, what the voters are concerned about is the handling of the economy, and they say there's a trust deficit there they have with Joe Biden. Well, I look forward to reminding voters across this country of why women lost the right to choose because of President Trump. He has gone on record many times bragging about a six-week abortion ban, putting into place a corrupt Supreme Court that overturned Roe v. Wade. We saw that win at the polls, not only in Michigan last November, but certainly in Ohio this past November, and even in places like Kentucky. So. When the race really comes to the fore and voters are really reminded what President Trump stands for, that he doesn't stand for women's health and women's health protection, I think that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and their pro-choice values, their pro-America values, will continue to win the day. And certainly the economics that speak for themselves, booming manufacturing that's all over Michigan, finally long overdue investment in infrastructure, and of course support for our veterans and solutions for the gun violence epidemic that has deeply impacted us in Michigan.